Everybody stand and sing this morning. <clears throat> if you're able, if you're not, well, that, that'll be great. okay, too. 298. <clears throat> so good to, to have everybody out. Uh, it, it, this has been a long year. It's just so good to be in here and I can hear people, see people. That, that's, that's really been bad, just looking at cars. Really, that's about what it amounted to. Just do 135. 135. <laughs> When my soul is singing in the promised land above, I'll be satisfied. Praising Christ the Savior for redeeming grace and love. I'll be satisfied, I'll be satisfied, I'll be satisfied. When my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, I'll be satisfied. shall never die I'll be satisfied There to be with loved ones never more to say goodbye I'll be satisfied I'll be satisfied I'll be satisfied 
Him my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord. I'll be satisfied. When I meet the ransom over on that golden shore, I'll be satisfied. There I'll join the angels singing praises evermore. I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. Presence 
before we turn it over to Brother Phil. Anybody got a song on your heart or anything? All right. If not, Brother Phil. All right. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Good to see you. Good to be able to be out. It's a beautiful day, ain't it? It's a good day. It's a day the Lord's made. He made it for you and me. He didn't make it as to uh, to be uh, unnoticed. He made it for a purpose. We appreciate that. We appreciate the good Sunday school lesson. Uh, we appreciate the good singing, and the fellowship. Uh, I tell you, it's just uh, uh, there in Hebrews ten twenty five, where it said, "Forsaking not the assembling yourselves together, as a manner of some is," and. Uh, I believe we ought to come to God's house and talk about uh, that Jesus is coming soon. Yes, right. He is coming soon. Yes. We uh, understand that. And uh, you say, well, uh, this has got to be fulfilled in that. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know of anything in the Bible. And I've read it right much. I'm not real Bible read, but I don't know of anything that has to happen before Jesus can come back. Uh, you say, well, preacher, uh, the Bible said the gospel will be preached all over the, uh, the world. Well, uh, what do you think is going on now? Uh, I mean, satellites where that uh, there's not anywhere on earth that uh, the preaching of the Word of God don't go out to. And, uh, uh, I, and uh, I miss looking for him. Uh, things getting bad. Uh, you say, well, things going to get better. I got to... I hate to disappoint you, but I don't believe things going. I believe today is the best day that you'll ever see. Uh, it'll get worse from here on out, but God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne. It's good to be here today. Good to see you. I, I tell you, we miss the folks over in the fellowship hall, uh, and uh, uh, we. Uh, uh, but we're glad you're here. We're glad that uh, the Lord's here and. Boy, I tell you, and I said Wednesday night, uh, I want the church to know that me and women appreciate what you've done for us, what uh, uh, you uh, and, and people done for us. We uh, It humbles us that uh, we're not worthy. At, uh, I mean, we're, we're as sorry. And, uh, but uh, what we are, we are what we are by the grace of God. Uh, and I appreciate that. Got your Bibles today. Turn back with us to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17. When you find your place, if you will, stand with us as we read the Word of God. 1 Kings chapter 17, beginning with verse 8. And the Word of the Lord came unto him, saying, talking about Elijah here now, Arise, get thee to the Zarephath, and which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I might drink, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thy said, and make me therefore a little cake first, bring it unto me, and after uh, make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall a cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and her son and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of, uh, barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, uh, which he spake, I to Elijah. Grace and you pray with us. Okay. 
I want to talk to you a little while. Uh, I didn't plan this, but I preached the other day on, uh, started with Elijah there in verse 1 when he went down to Ahab and said there'd not be any rain except by his word. And uh, the Lord impressed us that uh, we, we're just uh, uh, been a, a, a going ahead uh, because that uh, the Bible said the things were written aforetime were written for our learning, for our understanding. It might be an admonition to us. And I believe that, uh, that it might be an example to us that we can look back and see how that God uh, dealt with Elijah, how that God protected, how that God supplied in Elijah's day, and he still uh, can do the same. I believe faith consists of three things. I believe that uh, you believe that God did. And believe that God can do it again. And believe that God would do it again uh, if it was necessary. And I believe that as uh, uh, Elijah went down and told Ahab that it wouldn't rain, the Bible said in James that he prayed earnestly, it rained not for the space of three year and a half. And then God told uh, him here, uh, notice in verse 2, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, uh, Right there is what the important part of it is. The word of the Lord uh, came unto Elijah because that uh, God was instructing him. And you know, uh, we're living in a day now that uh, the Bible said that in the last days there would be a famine, not of bread, and uh, but of the, the, the hearing of the word of God. And... Uh, we're just about living in that day now. You hear everything you say of uh, the Word of God a lot of times, but uh, God, uh, the Word of the Lord came into light and said, Now, I've got a brook down here uh, that I'm going to keep her running for as long as I keep you there. You go down and you'll uh, get water, and, and I'm going to command the ravens to bring you bread and meat twice today. And he went down, and God told him one day, he said, uh, now he said uh, he uh, came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, and he because there had been no rain in the land. You know, a lot of times God has got, a, as I said uh, other night, uh, God's got a special place for every one of us. I don't care how long you've been saved, how big you are, God. If you're a Christian, God's got a plan and a place and a way for you to walk. And the only way you'll ever really be happy, the only way you'll ever be spiritually fed, uh, is to be in the will of God. Now, uh, uh, when you're in the will of God, and then uh, there is happiness. You remember Jesus said uh, that I, well, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to leave my joy with you. And the only way that you can have that joy uh, is to be in the will of God. Now, Elijah was at this brook. The Bible said the brook dried up. Elijah could have still stayed there uh, and he'd have thirsted to death. The ravens would have quit coming and he'd have starved to death. Uh, a lot of people is living today uh, in the past. They'd, I reckon they think God can't do anything today. I reckon they think God can't bless today and God can't use them today. Uh, but I'll tell you, he's the same God today that he was uh, uh, back of this and God is still able. Uh, but the Bible said in verse 8, Again, and the word of the Lord came uh, unto him, saying, The word of the Lord came unto Elijah. Now, Elijah was in the will of God, and God was instructing him and on the way. Uh, if you'll stay in the will of God, uh, you won't have a hard time of figuring out uh, how that life ought to take it. Uh, if you'll stay in the will of God, and then he will impress you. God don't speak to us audibly. Uh, he don't speak to us like I'm speaking to you. Uh, but he impresses our heart. Uh, he he, uh, uh, he uh, shows us when uh, somebody's teaching Sunday school or somebody's testifying or somebody's preaching or it might be a song that God is to uh, takes and, and shows you and speaks to you <coughs> through that. I uh, be here the Bible said the Lord came unto him saying, uh, Now, uh, uh, you know, uh, if uh, we wonder why that God said, uh, go to a widow's house, I've got a widow over there uh, that's going to supply you food that is going to sustain thee. And uh, if it had been us, if it had been man, uh, they would have sent Elijah out of somebody that was really rich. They would have sent Elijah to somebody that maybe had a hotel or uh, somewhere, but God said, 
Uh, they is a widow over there. And that widow was just about to starve to death. And how is a widow uh, going to sustain him? Uh, brother, by the hand of God. Uh, you see, God works through people. God don't always work uh, through the greatness of man. The Bible said not many men, uh, not many mighty, not many great are called. He didn't say that they wasn't some. Every once in a while that God will call a man to preach that uh, is a great man or a mighty man. Uh, but normally uh, the Bible said he chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And uh, that's the reason you'll see some old boy out here uh, that's never been, uh, that's never amounted to much in life. Uh, maybe it's been uh, wild and never, but God saves him, calls him to preach, and uh, people wonder about that. Uh, and here, uh, God was ascending Elijah down to a widow's house. Now, uh, that didn't have any food supply. I mean, he was sending him down there. I told her that this widow, I was about to starve herself to death, and how was she going to sustain him? And as I said, we think about the big things. Uh, you know, sometimes God, I will use something that looks like I uh, there's not much to it, and then he'll make something great out of it. In the early 1900s, there was a revival going on in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and that revival, uh, there was uh, uh, just one little old boy out of his shoe store. I uh, worked in a shoe store, got saved, and uh, that little old boy's name was D.L. Moody. And we've all heard of D.L. Moody. God uh, uh, used him mightily. D.L. Moody uh, passionately preached and uh, witnessed, and there was a man by the name of F.B. Myers that uh, he got saved, and boy, uh, he went out and, and, and he was uh, uh, too passionately about the work of Christ. And he went out and he, uh, got, to, uh, he got under a burden for a young man that was a baseball player uh, whose name was Billy Sunday. And Billy Sunday got converted. All of you heard of Billy Sunday. And uh, he was a man that was a temperance preacher, preached against alcohol, and uh, became a great evangelist in uh, the United States. And, uh, and uh, they got him down to Charlotte to hold a, 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 a crusade one year. Had a great uh, crusade. I mean, a great crowd, and uh, God done mighty wonderful works that year. And uh, the next year, they wanted him to come back, and... Uh, his schedule, he couldn't get back. And he sent a man. They, he talked him into uh, letting a man by the name of Mordecai Ham. Some of you may have heard of him. I remember that my grandmother, uh, with the, uh, we used to listen to Mordecai Ham on the radio. Uh, but Mordecai Ham went to Charlotte in the crusade. Uh, it looked like that it was a failure. They wasn't many people come. And they wasn't many done. Uh, but there's one little old boy that walked off of a dairy farm I come to the meeting and got saved. You know who that little old boy was? It was Billy Graham uh, that's done a great work here uh, in the United States. And I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people I've had preachers say, uh, well, I don't care much about Billy Graham. I'd tell them, I'd say, well, Billy Graham knows you. He probably wouldn't care much about you. And uh, you see, that works uh, by both ways. But uh, I want to say that uh, but while I'm here, that I listen to Billy Graham preach a lot, I've never heard him preach anything that wasn't Bible. Uh, it was always the Word of God, and I'm not uh, blowing his balloon today, uh, but Billy Graham uh, has done a lot for America. A lot yeah. of folks got saved under his preaching. Uh, but anyway, uh, we see here that he sent, her, uh, sent him down to this widow's house. And the Bible, notice... Uh, uh, notice there in verse 10, and he arose. Uh, uh, he became obedient to the Word of God. Uh, the Bible said that it's not to be hearers only, uh, but to be doers of the Word. Uh, we, uh, 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 a lot of folks say, well, I believe the Word. Uh, but it just uh, uh, saying you believe it. If you believe it, do it. And I believe that uh, Elijah got up and he arose because that I don't know where he surveyed the situation or not, uh, but they wasn't any alternative uh, where he could have survived except that he had stayed with the Word of God. Uh, folks, I want to tell you today uh, that you may be in a, in a place that 
uh, that you never thought you'd be in. You may be in a place that uh, looks like your life is going to come to an end. Uh, but remember this, that uh, God is still in control and uh, God is still knows what's going on in our lives. He's not one here that's got a problem. He's not one anywhere that's listening uh, that, that, that has a problem that God don't know about uh, and he can't have, uh, he can't uh, uh, handle but Elijah got it. That was the only alternative. I would say today, uh, the only alternative you have is to trust in Him. I uh, turn to Him, depend on Him, uh, because He is uh, faithful. He is faithful in what He promised. Now, uh, let me say, and I'll quote again in Romans chapter 4, Abraham believed God. It was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now, how did he believe God? He didn't just say, I believe God. Uh, but the Bible said a little farther down in that chapter, uh, it said that he believed that God was able to perform that which he had promised. Right. Now, do you really believe that God can do uh, what he's promised? I do. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I do. You know, uh, uh, sometimes I'm like, uh, the man that he brought his son to Jesus and uh, Jesus said if you believe all things is, uh, is possible and he said Lord I believe but help thy my unbelief uh, sometimes I believe and I uh, have to say Lord help thy my unbelief uh, because as I've told you uh, the Bible is not hard to understand it's just hard to believe uh, you say well preacher I believe every word in it well uh, uh, you do in your intelligence, but I mean in your actions, in your trust. And as I told you the other day, uh, sit down sometime and take inventory and see, do I really believe in God? Do I really believe what Jesus says? Or do I just believe because that I've heard it? Folks, listen. You say, uh, uh, preach what you're talking about. I'm talking about, do you really trust Him? I mean, it's easy to trust God when everything's going good. I mean, when the bank account's up and the blood pressure's down and, and the young'uns is a and uh, uh, everything, it's, it's, really, it's really easy to uh, believe and trust in God. But I'll tell you, uh, when things begin to go rough sometimes, uh, the devil leads up and he said, if the Lord really cared about you, this wouldn't be a happening in your life. Uh, he wouldn't allow this to happen in your life. Uh, but I want you to know that the Bible said uh, that all things work together uh, for good to them that love God. Uh, we don't understand it a lot of times, but uh, God knows what's going on. And since he can see the end uh, from the beginning, I believe that he knows what uh, uh, what to do, don't you? Uh, but let me hurry on here. Uh, and he went and he rose to and went to Zarephath. And when he came to her, uh, this woman, this widow woman, was out uh, picking up sticks. And I don't know, God may have impressed him and said, that's the woman there. You know what that he said? He said, uh, bring me a little water in a vessel. Bring me a glass of water. Bring me a cup of water. Well, she started to go get him some water. And he said, bring me a little morsel, uh, uh, bring me a, a little piece of bread, bring me a morsel. And you, she said, we don't have it. She said, all I've got is a little handful of meal and a little cruise of oil. And said, that's all this. He said, that's why I was gathering these sticks. I was going to gather two sticks and... Uh, take that and, uh, and uh, uh, make a cake of cornbread and we're just going to eat it and die. You say, the preacher, uh, the Bible don't say that she's going to make cornbread. She had meal and all. What do you think she could make out of that? I mean, uh, uh, and, uh, and she said, we're going to make this cake and then we're going to eat it and die. And Elijah, uh, you see, uh, Elijah had been dealing with God uh, before that he de uh, before that he dealt with this widow woman, and as I told you, uh, before that you deal with man, uh, you need to deal with God. Uh, and when you deal with God, and 
uh, and then you're able to deal with man. Uh, because when, uh, when, when God's working on you, uh, he's then worked on somebody over there. And if he impresses you to go see, and if he impresses you to go talk to somebody, and then I'll guarantee you uh, that God's working on them uh, before that you get there. Uh, we, we heard Harold talking about other night when he was preaching, he said that uh, he'd been a visiting a man in a hospital, and uh, boy, he went down there uh, one night, and that man was, had been expecting him. Uh, God was a dealing with him while he was a dealing with Harold. I had to go and speak to him. Uh, folks, listen. Uh, God uh, instructed Elijah. He knew what was going on. Uh, it didn't look like it was a reasonable thing to do. Uh, but when he got down there, and then God was there. He was, uh, uh, he be, a lot of times, uh, uh, the devil would slip up and say, it's not reasonable to do this. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Lord's not going to ask us to do anything that'll hurt us or even embarrass us. You say, well, preacher, I, I can't witness. I can't talk to anybody. I can't pray in public. God's not going to ask you to do anything that'll embarrass you. Uh, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, uh, folks, uh, I don't know why we get so embarrassed over uh, doing anything for the Lord. Uh, we go to a ball game, we'll holler and scream and shout and uh, spit all over the crowd in front of us, a hollering, and, uh, and uh, then come to church. And, uh, and this woman told me one day, uh, and... Uh, my grandson's playing basketball, and I'd been to a basketball uh, game, and she'd, uh, she'd showed herself, you know how folks will do sometimes, and she was explaining to me, uh, Preacher, I, I, I just don't like to go to church where they uh, so loud, and, uh, and I said, really? And she said, yeah. I said, I said, didn't I see you at the ball game yesterday? And she couldn't say that. Why? Because, folks, listen, ain't nothing wrong with hollering the ball game if you holler the right thing. I mean, uh, uh, there was a preacher, when Scott was playing Little League, there was a, a prominent preacher in Burnsville. Uh, he was helping coach a, a little uh, a league team, and uh, they hadn't been beaten a year or two, and uh, them old boys from Mountain Fork was wearing them out. And he was up, and he said some pretty bad words. I mean some cuss words. And I mean, didn't that really look good? That pre I mean, how'd you get up and, and, and preach on Sunday uh, to the same crowd? Uh, if you heard me out here a cussing and come in here to pray, I mean, uh, uh, honestly, if, uh, uh, if, 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 if I had a, a pastor and I heard him a cussing, and I wouldn't care much about hearing him preach on Sunday. Uh, because uh, uh, I believe if you... And it's what I always told my young and, and, and told uh, the young boys that hung around, I'd say, if you live right, you got to do right. You've got to do right if you live right. right. Yes. Folks, listen, people is are watching you. And uh, the word of the Lord came to Elijah and he said, uh, and I was kind of getting off the subject a little bit there. And, uh, and uh, verse 12 uh, the, the widow said, and she said, As the Lord thy God liveth. Now, in, uh, over here, in, uh, uh, we see that Elijah said, in verse 1, As the Lord God of Israel liveth. He was acknowledging that, uh, not that just God was uh, living in heaven, but he was uh, living on the inside. I mean, hey folks, listen, if you're saved, and then there is life in here, and it's not the physical life. It is the spiritual life of the person of the Holy Spirit of God lives on the inside. Uh, we are just a vessel uh, for the Holy Ghost to live in. Uh, and the Bible tells us over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, uh, What know ye not that ye are a vessel? You are a, a place where the Spirit of God is going to live. And we have something alive on the inside. And it's going to stay alive. But she said, 
As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said, Fear not. He said, Don't be afraid. Did you realize that in the Bible, 369 times uh, it is said, Fear not or be of good cheer. And that many times, uh, you know, uh, the world is stressful. I believe if you'll, uh, 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 if you'll listen to the doctors and the health experts, uh, they say that stress is one of the worst things on the body. You know what brings on stress? Fear. We're living a fearful time. People is afraid. I mean, we're living in a day of fear. Fear of not knowing what's going to happen. Fear of disease. Fear of this virus and pandemic has run people until that... I, I don't even know how to explain. I mean, there is a fear over the land. But God said, fear not. I heard J. Harold Smith say that uh, 96% of the things that you fear don't never happen. Another 4% there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen? I mean, it's, it's pray up and stay uh, close to God and uh, when anything comes in, it's run to Him. It's run to Him. Don't try to figure it out yourself. I mean, I, I, I know when I was a, a pastor and I, we had some problems in church and I'd pray and, and I'd go up there on Saturday night and I'd pray about all night and sometimes all night. I mean, boy, I was disturbed and I was a praying, uh, God, I got the awfulest problem here ever was. And then happened. And then I got to praying saying, Lord, we've got a problem. And then I finally just went up there one night and I said, I'm going to settle this thing. I got an order and I said, God, you've got the worst problem here I believe I ever seen. And I said, whatever you want to do about it, I'm a candidate for it. And I said, I've, I, I, I'm through with my say. I said, whatever you want to do is fine with me and I'll be a candidate for whatever you want me to do. And the problem began to get worked out. You see, it's, hey, it's God's problem. Now, I believe we ought to do what we can. I believe we ought to take all the precautions that we can. But God is in control. He's in control of your life. He's in control of my life. And I'm going to trust in Him. Every day, I pray for this church. I say, oh, Lord, put offenses around us that I will keep this virus off of us. And you say, do you really believe it will? I believe, it. I mean, some of us may get it. I may get it, or you may get it. Uh, but if we do, God knows about it. And fear not. I mean, hey, listen. Uh, you can worry yourself to death. It ain't a thing you can do about it. I went to the dermatologist one day, and he's a poking and gouging around on me, and he said, get ready for some pain. I said, let her rip. You say, well, preacher, that's a... Uh, I, hey, it, it, it was the same if I'd started whinling around and saying, oh, my goodness, is it going to hurt? He said, you ain't got a bit of sense. <laughs> but, I mean, it was the same thing, and so is this pandemic. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it. Let her rip, but uh, if, uh, uh, if it's a wearing you to death, look at the Lord, look at your God, look at the uh, one that saved you because he's able to sustain thee. Uh, this poor widow woman was near death. Uh, she was just one cake of bread away from death, wow. and God intervened. Wow. Well, what, what happened here? That God sent Elijah over there, Elijah was going to be taken care of, and the widow in turn, her and her son, and her house was going to be taken care of. As I told you the other night, 
Uh, when God blesses somebody, uh, that's not the only one. It'll move out and it will bless somebody else. Uh, when God blesses you, it'll bless somebody else. And when God blesses somebody else, uh, it's just like a chain reaction. He'll keep a, uh, he, it'll keep it going down. And the Bible said here, uh, the Bible said, Fear not, the Lord said, make me a little cake and bring it to me and after make thee for thy son. And then uh, he said this. He said, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Amen. And the day that the Lord sendeth until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Right. Now here this woman, uh, she had just a little handful of meal. That's right. yes. Now, God didn't fill that barrel up. He could have filled that barrel up just like that. Just as easy. Yeah. You see, God don't do everything and take care of every problem in your life at one time. But He's able to take care of all of them. Yeah. Now, this woman probably went in and uh, I don't know. Uh, she, uh, she got her some meal out and made a cake. She probably peeped over. I don't know. The Bible don't say, but knowing how men is, it's probably a little doubt there, wouldn't it? I mean, that never happened before. But God had never dealt like that before. Now, you got problems in your life, things in your life. Uh, people's families seem like a lot of times can, uh, uh, that, that they can uh, cause... Uh, uh, so much disturbance and worry. And God knows about it. And don't give up on it because that uh, God understands what's going on. And as I said, He don't fix everything at the same time. I bet God takes care of what's going on in His time. Amen. Now, this woman, she'd go in and she'd, uh, she did. She made Elijah, she... Uh, uh, she believed the man of God. She believed uh, that uh, it was the word of God. She made Elijah a little cake and brought him some water. And I guess she went back and she began to peep over. Well, this meal there, I might have left some. But she went down and she got some. And made another cake. And I mean, hey, you know... Uh, Ingles could have filled that barrel up or Food Line could have filled that barrel up. God could have filled it up. But he didn't want it that way. You know, when Jesus was teaching the disciples, they uh, come to him one day and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The, uh, and then uh, as it goes on thy will be done in heaven and this and earth and then he said give us this day our daily bread right. yes. it's give it to us as we need it right. yes. it's give it to us you see if that barrel had been filled up and knowing meal uh, if it got hot uh, humid weather it would have molded wouldn't it I mean uh, or, I mean it's be real about it you could have got weevils in it. But it was always fresh. When she'd take one, uh, uh, when she'd take one uh, helping out and she'd go back and it was always fresh. God never uh, uses leftover stuff. God always gives you fresh stuff. Uh, brother, that is fresh and uh, vibrant and good and God will supply as it's needed. Notice what the Bible says. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She and her house, now just not her, her and her son, but her and her house did eat many days. Probably she seen that they, every time she touched the meal out, there was some meal there. She'd tell her neighbors in her house. She'd tell her kin folks, come over and eat. And they'd come and eat. And I don't know, I mean, 
uh, when something good's going on, you've got kin folks you never thought you had. Uh, I mean, if, uh, uh, if uh, it's, it, it, it's funny how people claim kin. And you know, somebody will uh, have a will, and, and it was a, a man died uh, around Burns, I won't call his name, a few years ago. He is worth millions of dollars. And he didn't have anybody to leave it to. And he didn't have a will made, and they uh, they uh, took it down to the family. And it went down to cousin, 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 I don't know. Uh, but they was kin folks come up that, I mean, you'd, you'd never have thought of. But I guess she said, God was a supply. If you are in the will of God, God will supply your house and your family, your son, your family, your house, whatever is needful. The Bible said, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. This wasn't Elijah's doing. Notice, by the word of the Lord, it was the Lord's doing. Elijah was just the instrument that told about it. And when anything happens, it's not, uh, it's not uh, uh, me or, or James or John or anybody. It is the Lord's doing. Right, right. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, you ever hear and and uh, tell evangelist, hey, some good ones, I guess, but a lot of them want you to sow a seed of uh, so much and. And I understand you can't outgive God, but uh, I believe that uh, I don't believe God gives uh, a man the ability to just gather in money. They had a, a on twenty twenty one night. Uh, I watched it, and maybe you watched it, and a lot of uh, people was mailing in money, and uh, there's. Uh, uh, it, it was uh, it was just a shame a lot of times. I'm going to hush before I get uh, started here. But but listen, I believe in giving. I don't believe you can out give God. Right. True. But I don't believe that it comes from man. I believe it's God. And I'll tell you, you say you believe in healing. I believe in healing. And let me tell you, the Bible says I don't believe that. Uh, I, I don't believe that man has got uh, the ability to go and butt one on the head and him get hit. No, sir. I believe the Bible said, "Is any sick among you, I let him call for the elders of the church, anointing him with oil and praying, uh, getting the elders up there and praying with him. And if he's committed sin, and then he will, uh, 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 he, uh, if he's committed sin, he'll be forgiven. And listen, it's not God's will and I don't even know why I'm getting on this, but it's not God's will uh, that everybody would be healed just like that. You remember there was a blind man, and, and he, uh, uh, he, he and the Lord healed him, and uh, they got to question him around and said, who sinned, this man or his parents? Somebody sinned along the way. And Jesus said, neither. He said, but we wanted to see the glory and the power of God and that's what happened. And listen to me, folks. Uh, listen to me. The Bible said, by the word of the Lord, this woman, she, uh, uh, she benefited by the obedience of the prophet of God. There will be people that will benefit if you live right and do right and follow the Lord they will benefit. As I told you, when Isaac and Haley dedicated their uh, baby out there, I believe there's four generations, wasn't it? There. The Bible said the sins of the father will follow down to four generations. But if the sins follow them that far, and then the righteousness will follow down generations. I... And, and, and I wish I'd uh, uh, wrote it down. And I forget, but I'll give you a sketch of it. They was, uh, 
they looked out and followed the generations of a missionary, a great man missionary, his four generations. And they took a man that was a, a well, we'd call him a bootlegger, and they followed his four generations. Now, I'm not saying that a bootlegger can't get saved or his children can't get saved. Don't get me wrong here. But they followed the generations. He, uh, this man didn't believe in God. He didn't have anything for God. He's uh, probably an infidel. And they followed down four generations. And I forget how many of them. There was several of them that was hung. Some of them went to prison. The biggest majority had to live on social uh, services. But the missionary, they went down four generations. They was preachers. They was missionaries. They was senators. They was judges that come out, and, and they was not one that spent any time in the penitentiary. Folks, listen. Right living will pay off. Trusting in God will pay off. Amen. I mean, it ain't popular to live right today uh, and, and, and live holy. The Bible says that holiness, no man will see God. I mean, God's holy and he expects us to be holy. Well, I'm going to hush. I don't want to be a harping. But I, I, I want you to know, uh, God's in control. Don't fear. I mean, this virus thing, do the best you can. But don't let it get you down. Because he is in control. I'd like to bow your head in prayer for a minute as we pray. Uh, let me say this. And I don't even know how to say it anymore. To, uh, I ought to call it. If you've got a need in your life, and then you just ask the Lord, he'll do it. He'll help you. He'll watch over you. Roger, you pray with us. I wonder if anybody's got anything for Mike Phelps. If not, it's been good to be here. Good to see you out. Just enjoy this beautiful day that God's given It's been a great day. It's been a great service. Appreciate Brother Chad for bringing us the Sunday school lesson. Brother Philip, the, the message this morning. It's been wonderful. It's always good to be back in God's house. Good to see everybody. We miss you folks in the fellowship hall, and, and uh, we, we think about you a lot, and uh, we know you're with us. Um, I do want to go over our prayer list. want to welcome any visitors. If we got any visitors with us uh, out there, out there in the listening to us or over to fellowship hall or over here at the church either one once you know you're welcome here at coffee ridge and it'd be good to have you come back anytime you can um we've added a couple to our uh to our list to, to pray for had a young man in our community austin green uh he's going through a really tough time right now him and his family something the, i'm sure the toughest thing they've ever been through so let's really lift them up in prayers if you would austin green and uh remember emmy joe Tate Kearns, Margaret Foster, Terry and Becky Haynes, Peggy Tilson, Laura Parker, Linda Edwards, Brother Dorsey's wife, and Linda Edwards, Brother Guy's wife. Uh, Brother Daniel Tilson, let's remember him. He's going through a hard time. Sister Tanya and her family, Lana and her mom, Savannah's mom, Betty, Beverly Ball's brother and sister, Robert and Martha Rice, Janet Morrow's husband, Juanita Willis, Gerald Blankenship, Teresa Wilson, 
Larry Rose, Teddy Willis, uh, Dana Arwood and his family, Kelvin Thomas's wife, Sharon Slagle. Sharon Slagle got some news that uh, the medication that she's been taking for her cancer isn't working, so they're going to move her to chemotherapy. So let's let's remember Sharon. Bobby Tipton, Junior Carver, David Brotherton and family, or David Brotherton's family, let's remember them. Paula Mary Skinto, Nikki Cox, Dallas Gregg, Jared Foster, Sister Jessica Swope, uh, Cindy's mother, her son, her nephew and niece, Margaret Edwards, Patty Garland, Rebecca Hale, Sam, Sammy Adomi, Jonathan Whitson, Bobby Shelton, Terry Williams, Broit Williams, Alex Foster, Andrea Smith, Janet Deaton, Ben Brackens. Uh, we'd ask that you remember Vernon, and, and this is this is Ronnie's brother, Vernon, and Diane. Uh, Patsy is uh, getting over her surgery. Don't forget to remember her. Um, And our young people, let's always remember our young people, our church, our school system, and different ones. A lot, a lot of stuff to pray about. Let's remember all these things. A uh, few announcements. Um, ladies Auxiliary is November 7th at 2 o'clock. Trunk or Treat is October 31st, and we'll need to get with Chad and Savannah and see what time that is. Maybe we can send that out on text for everybody. We don't have a time for next Saturday. And... Uh, Next Sunday, our smaller children, Cindy's and Melissa's class, will be having Sunday school downstairs. Uh, John got us the machine. It, it came in late last night, so we'll be putting that up there. And it's just for the smaller kids that were in Cindy's class and in Melissa's class. They'll be opening up the big classroom, socially distancing and all that, so they can have their own Sunday school class down there, a few of the smaller kids. So any other announcements? Okay, remember Sherry. Remember Sherry. She's going to be going to the doctor this week, so remember her. Okay. Continue to remember Jessica. Anything else? Okay. Remember Sister Jones' sister. Remember that. Sister Sharon's got some unspoken prayer requests. Remember those. Anything else? Brother Dennis, special, special request. If nothing else, let's stand and we'll, we'll uh, dismiss in a word of prayer this morning. Don't forget to set your clocks next next Saturday night, Sunday morning. <laughs> Some of them set their clocks this week. So don't forget that. I didn't realize that was coming up, so remember that. Uh, so now you don't have an excuse for being late for church. We've reminded you, right? Okay, next Saturday at 6 is trunk or treat. Thank you. Very good. Next Saturday at 6 o'clock, trunk or treat over here at the Fellowship Hall. All right. Brother Eugene, will you dismiss us in prayer? Amen. If some of you can stick around and help clean up or sanitize.